Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching our broadcast today. Insurance. People need insurance, uh, and if they don't have insurance, and uh, situations happen uh, that could be devastating, uh, they're not covered, they're going to lose a lot of money, and it's going to be very, very rough for them in their life. I mean, people have house insurance, but do they have flood insurance? And if the flood comes, uh, and they just have house insurance without flood insurance, it's a disaster. Um, people drive cars. You need to have insurance. But if you're driving without insurance and, and you get into an accident, it's, it's horrible for you. Uh, people who have insurance, they have a collision, there's an accident, well, they don't have to worry about anything. It would be taken care of. They pay, pay the little whatever the deductible is. And uh, uh, health insurance, the same thing. So you can go on and on and on. You know, people who don't have health insurance, uh, for whatever reason, and they, they get sick, um, it's bad. Um, and so it, we have to understand that's in the natural. But what about eternal insurance? You know, I have a, I have a friend who uh, he works for a life insurance company, and he sells life insurance. But he's a believer, and he says, "Do you have eternal life insurance?" Mm. And and that's the main thing. <coughs> you know, there's a lot of people out there. They're good, and and that's great. They're good. And, uh, but being good is not going to get you to heaven. Matter of fact, they said to Jesus, they called him good master. And even Jesus said, I'm not good. Only the Father in heaven is good. You know, every major religion, um, every major religion, their MO is do good. But we're born and shaped in iniquity. I mean, you say, well, you mean that little boy, that little girl? that's about a year old, that beautiful face and nice blue eyes, they're, they're a sinner? Well, don't give them the rattler and see how they act. <laughs> um, don't give them the teething ring and see how they act. <coughs> well, we might not do <coughs> like that, but we sure do act up uh, without Christ in our life and even with Christ in our life because we still have our flesh. The uh, question is, do you have eternal life insurance? And you know, Easter's coming up. Uh, Jesus was raised from the dead. And that's the greatest feat that ever happened in the history of the world, that he left our sins on his body on the cross in hell. And when he rose up, he had a new body and a new life. And some people have a new body and a new life uh, when they weren't wild and they didn't get involved in crazy things. They were just a common person, uh, but they had something missing in their life, and they, it was Jesus. Like um, Reverend Ben Bennett, who is our guest today. So thank you, Ben, for coming on and, and sharing um, your, your walk with the Lord, which is more than your walk without the Lord. Right, right. <laughs> because you were very fortunate at a very young age, to find the truth. Amen. And, and so uh, when you were growing up, um, were your parents believers? Did they take you to church? Well, I was raised Episcopalian, Joe. Um, and we went to the Episcopal Church in Irvington, New York. <clears throat> and I tried to, to mean the prayers. In other words, I, <clears throat> I would say the prayers and I would try to emphasize and try to put my heart into it, but I didn't really know the Lord. And um, it was only through my mom who had an experience with the Holy Spirit when she was 51 years old. Um, a friend of hers had gone to a, a church where the pastor had an experience with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. And I know speaking in tongues is the Spirit of God working through, through us to pray in a, in a supernatural language, and that's what speaking in tongues is. And, and 
my mom's friend came and shared the experience that she received at a church in Philadelphia, and my mom received that experience of the Holy Spirit, and it changed her life. And the Lord became alive to her, and she shared it with us. And we humored her at first. We just sort of made, you know, really didn't believe, you know. Um, but then what happened was is that uh, my mom had me to go to some Bible studies in uh, Mount Vernon, New York. And this pastor, uh, Harold Bredesen, uh, shared with us uh, his toolkit about how Jesus died for us and took the penalty that we deserve. Yeah. That God, we were guilty for breaking God's law. We all deserve to be punished, but the judge paid the penalty out of his own pocket in the sense that he sent his son, Jesus, to take the penalty for us that we deserve. Mm. So God Almighty, the judge of the universe, judged his son so he wouldn't have to judge me you know it's um it, it's so simple yeah <laughs> salvation yeah and the devil makes it like it's so hard mm -hmm. it, it's like if if i said to you ben uh i want to buy a, a round trip ticket uh to go any place you want to go yeah for free right you're going to jump on it right right well this is so much better than a round-trip ticket because a round-trip ticket, maybe you go for a month, mm -hmm. but you got to come back. Right. But this is for eternity, forever. And yeah. nobody knows what forever yeah. means right? because everything here on earth comes to an end. And eventually this earth, in spite of the environmentalists that are trying to preserve the earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but Scripture says otherwise, as you know, right that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be burning up uh, this, uh, this earth here. And it talks about it in Zechariah. Yeah. And uh, it, we see the nuclear arsenal that's in this earth mm -hmm. that could very well be the catalyst that's going to uh, burn it up. Now, before your mother came to Christ, right. was she going to church or not really? No, we were, you know, we were... Ah, uh, yeah, we'd go sometimes. Easter, maybe. <laughs> we'd go sometimes. You know, there's, yeah. you know, the one thing about, we have a hunger for, for relationship and fellowship. And Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And life is really having relationships and fellowship, having family. And the church is there t for that, to have fellowship, to have relationship, to have um, community. And... So my mom was involved in the community, community doing, stuff. Doing, doing, good doing, stuff. doing good stuff, right? Good stuff, <laughs> right? but without Christ. <laughs> yeah, without Christ. She's on her way to hell. <laughs> right, right. And, 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 but see, but, but God. But God. He came in. And he there's came. a lot of people that do that. Right, They right. go to church uh, for good stuff, outreaches, yeah. you know, bringing food to the poor, helping people. Yeah. But, but, but in the natural, it's great. Right. But in the context of eternity, it's not going to get you into heaven. No, no. You, you know, so, but let's talk about your family life. Okay. Did you have a good family life? I did. My, my dad would work to, to provide for us, to give us a good life. And in a lot of ways, he, you know, he was busy working. So um, maybe he didn't spend as much time as he could have with us. But he did, he did provide for us, and he was a good dad. And one time he just gave me a hug, and he said, you're the apple of my eye. So, <laughs> well, that's interesting, because that's what Jesus says to us yeah. in the Scripture. Yeah. He says that, you know, we are the apple of his eye. Uh, of our Heavenly Father's heavenly eye. Heavenly Father says it. Yeah. yeah. We're the apple of his eye. Yeah. 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 And my, my, uh, I had an older brother, and I was, growing up I was very uh, obnoxious. To my to my older brother, I tease him, and then he would hit me or something, and I would go complain to my father, and then he'd get in trouble. Because, but I was the one who was really the culprit, yeah. <laughs> you know. In fact, I I went to a trip to Europe, and there was an older um, man who was on the trip, and I kept being obnoxious to him, 
and I was beating him in ping pong and gloating about it. And he put down his ping pong paddle and came over and punched me in the face, <laughs> and it cured me. <laughs> I was I wasn't obnoxious anymore. You, you know, got, you got cured. I got cured of being a, a little, you know, yeah. tease and obnoxious brat, I guess. So, so basically, you, you would say, um, before you came to Christ, you yeah. know, you, you had a good family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It wasn't like a lot of people. The father's not there. Uh, the mothers are drunk, you know, right, you, right. You, you had a good family, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and you had um, a good times together, mm -hmm. but was there a void in your life at that time that yeah, you uh, sensed, or maybe you didn't sense, but, you know. Yeah, I, I, I had a hunger for to be loved, you know, there's, growing up, we fall into the comparison trap, we compare ourselves one to another, you know, and and there was a hunger for love. And when I came to the Lord, I found people that were love, willing to love me and to pay attention to me and, and to give me attention and to give me love. And that was one thing that, that drew me into the Christian community and the Christian experience was mm. uh, the love of, of others, of the Lord towards me. And, and, and what about the love of the Lord in you now uh, compared to without yeah. the Holy Spirit? Because there's a difference, yeah. as you know. Th there's an emptiness in our life. Right, right. Yeah, like a lot of people fill the emptinesses with all different ways. You know, readaholics, uh, vacationaholics, <laughs> right, if you have right. the money, alcoholics, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sexaholics, you know, trying to fill, uh, eataholics, uh -huh. uh, trying to fill the void. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, but when Christ comes into your heart, then the voids filled. So you, you were laughing at your mom yeah. uh, because she came to Christ and had the yeah, Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. But basically, uh, you, you must have watched her and seen a change, correct? Yeah, yeah. She just was just alive, on just the joy, a lot of joy. And she'd tell us about different healings and miracles that the Lord would do. And... Um, and so she had me go to these Bible studies, and, and he, this, he shared the toolkit about how Jesus stood at the door and knocked. Revelation uh, 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man opens the door of his heart, I'll come into him and fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of, uh, I believe I was 16, back in 1969, I opened the door of my heart, and I prayed that prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and you know, be my Lord, Savior. And, and then he said, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. And he prayed for me to receive the Holy and Spirit. Yeah. And I did. And I thought at first, and I had that, a, 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 a supernatural experience where he said, you're going to pray in this prayer language. And he was praying in his prayer language, and he would, every stick, he would walk around his office praying in his prayer language, and a whole bunch of other people came into his office, and they were marching around his office praying in this prayer language. Yeah. And he would stick his ear next to my mouth to see if I had started to pray in my prayer language. And I came out with a word saying, Asabada. And my mind was saying, oh, you just made that up. But later I find out that the word Abba is the, means uh, in Aramaic, father, oh. daddy. And I was actually, it says, he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And that's the syllable uh, yeah, that, you used. that I used yeah. that came out of my spirit. And, 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 and as you said before, um, uh, Ben, as uh, this is something that a non-believer can't get. This is something that a church person can't get. Right. Only somebody who's born again receives Christ, that reads the Holy Spirit, comes in. And it's a prayer language, like here it is, uh, it's a Middle Eastern uh -huh. uh, uh, prayer language uh -huh. that, that you got over there, Arabic, uh -huh. where it said, uh, Father. Daddy. Right, Father. Daddy, right? Yeah. And the, 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 the uh, tongues that are spoken, as you know, is a language mm -hmm. someplace in the world, right. but it's perfect prayer to God. Amen. I, I remember the uh, first church a long time ago when I went, uh, my pastor, uh, who's Irish, right? He's playing the keyboard and he's singing, or the piano rather, and he just opened up his mouth and he started to do his prayer language while he's playing the piano. Mm. 
and he's uh, talking in perfect Hebrew. Wow. Wow. Why do I know it? Because I'm Jewish. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, he's Amen. and he's worshiping God in his prayer yeah. language, yeah. Yeah. and he doesn't know what he's saying. Right, right. But God does. It's perfect prayer with, with, yeah. with God yeah. and you. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, a great, it's a great gift that, that God yeah. gave. So let me just ask you, before you came to Christ, mm -hmm. okay, because a lot of people say, well, you needed it. I'm glad for you. You were a drug addict. You were an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You were a compulsive gambler. You were suicide. Uh, you were um, yeah. uh, uh, a sexaholic, whatever like that. Were you any of those things as an alcoholic, drug No. I mean, you no. were nothing no. like that. No. So in other words, um, it wasn't that you needed <clears throat> to come right. to Christ outside right. of that the Spirit of God was drawing you. Right, right. Uh, so basically... Uh, it wasn't like, well, I got to go. Well, everybody got to come to Christ or else they're going to be eternally right, judged right. and damned and yeah. go to hell and lake of fire yeah. because rejecting Christ. But you knew there was something that was there for you that your mom had. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I went to the service where people shared about how God had healed them and delivered them and blessed them and helped them. It was like a three-hour service testimony after testimony of people sharing what the Lord had done in their lives. The reality of the Christ. The reality of, of Christ. And so the, at the end of that service, he, Harold said, does anyone want to receive the love and the joy and the peace of Christ? And I raised yeah. my hand. And so, but I've learned uh, that it's really, Christianity is really about fellowship with the Creator, with God as our Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we enter into fellowship and relationship and God and with not only with them but with one another we have a, a rich inheritance in the body of Christ with fellow believers because we're become a family with God as our father and and, and, and the thing uh, Ben uh, what you were saying is Christianity is not a name it's a re and it's not a religion <laughs> no it's a personal relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. And, you know, Satan is so uh, cunning and uh, wise in his evil way mm -hmm. that what better way to keep people from Jesus than ha be people having religion? Right. Religion. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with a denomination, but they have Christ as the center mm -hmm. in the denomination. Mm -hmm. But the, what's very wrong, and it's anti-God and anti-Christ, as you know, is when there is a religion in Christianity that Christ is not the center, right. where you're not told you must be born again mm -hmm. and receive mm -hmm. Christ into your life. Right, right. And, and so basically what you said was so, was so uh, prophetic right, that right. It's Christianity is relationship with the one who died on the cross. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Plus, you know, the Lord said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but the world through me might be saved. And so the Lord wants us not to condemn us. He doesn't want to, he doesn't come to judge us because he took that judgment on the cross, but he wants us to come and to know him and his father. And this is life internal that we might know him and fellowship with him and his father. Uh, in heaven. I think uh, John wrote that in, in his first epistle. And, and, and uh, <clears throat> I heard somebody say recently, uh, there's, there's two, uh, two religions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is man's opinion, uh -huh. <laughs> and the second one is the Bible. Right. And, and man has opinion how to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Man has op opinion uh, which way is the right way, right. this and that. But there's only one true word, and that's the word of God, which mm. the Lord inspired holy men to write and, and the prophetic. Mm. So once you came to Christ, now you, you, you have a new mindset mm -hmm. like your mom did. Mm -hmm. And you probably had some joy, yep. and you probably had a, a <laughs> peace a joy. and peace within and joy that you yeah. never knew or had. Yeah. You yeah. Know, or other people are trying to get the joy from putting stuff in their bodies. Right. And sin is pleasurable. For a season. For a season. That's yeah. what the script Moses said. Yeah. He said, I'd rather dwell with the children of Israel than have sin for a season. Right. Pleasure. 
Um, so did you start sharing about your uh, relationship with Christ now? Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I wanted to tell every, tell everybody. I got involved with arguments about evolution <laughs> with this guy. I don't know, trying to you know defend, trying to, the best that I knew how to tell about the Lord. You know, uh, I had a lot of zeal but not a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I went down to a convention down in Newport News, Virginia, and the Holy Spirit just blessed me with joy, unspeakable and full. I mean, it was just, I got baptized in the James River downtown okay. down in, down in Newport News, down in that area. Got to be on the 700 Club and answer the telephones, uh, the telethon for yeah. the 700 Club, yeah. Pat Robertson. Yeah, which is very... Uh, CBN, a great, Christian great, Broadcasting great Network. Ministry. They have helping people tremendously. Yeah, yeah. and then I came back and, and I... I think it was that summer I told Bible stories in Mount Vernon uh, using flannel characters to the children. Um, um, so I and I got my got my driver's license and and that was a, a supernatural thing because when I pulled out when I was taking my driver's test and I pulled out I forgot to put the car in drive I had it in reverse. What? And I stepped on the. <laughs> gas to pull forward and I ended up going backwards oh, and I thought for sure I, that failed me but but it didn't I guess it was because of the quick reaction he passed me and oh. I because I couldn't have gone to Mount Vernon to tell the Bible stories without you needed I needed it. my license yeah, yeah you must have been a little nervous maybe <laughs> yeah just a tad yeah <laughs> like I was that. a lot a, little, a, little nervous, a, little a lot like that <laughs> and, and, and the thing is is that um so you were involved with children yeah and, yeah. and so, so tell some of the things that you did with the children because so many children are involved in, in the wrong things uh, with the street people and whatnot. Yeah. But were the children, uh, or, or what did you do to make them come to be aware of Christ? Well, we, we had uh, uh, flannel board characters. We had like a, um, we held Bible stories. Yeah. And I had, there was a, a lady in the church that had sort of pioneered that. So I worked with her and helped her in that. And then later, um, we had I had got acquired uh, puppets. Okay. And my friend uh, Mike and myself and his children, we did a puppet show where we had a, a, a heart of a gray heart and a, a red heart. The gray heart represented the heart of flesh, a heart of stone, and the red heart represented a heart of flesh. And how the Lord could take out the heart of stone. Mm. And he took out the heart of stone of a, of a dad who was hooked on heroin and drugs and was always buying stuff for himself and never buying anything for his children. But when he got took, the Lord took out the heart of stone and gave him a heart of flesh, he ended up buying ice cream for him, for his son and for the, all the friends, yeah. children. So, and so I gave an invitation. How many children want to receive a heart of flesh and have the heart of stone taken out of them? And it was a good response. Well, see, and what you said, you gave an example, but it's true. See, uh, the natural man, uh, born in sin, you know, through Adam and Eve, okay, it, their MO is self. Basically, it's self. Right. That's what the devil did to Eve. Right. Uh -uh. You can be independent of God, but yet you can be as God. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was self. But when you come to Christ, you know, uh, joy, like you said, joy, uh, yeah. there's a saying, Jesus, others, others. and yourself. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is that you, you think about others first, mm -hmm. and then you know God's going to take care of you. Right, and, right. and Jesus says it's better to give than receive. Yeah, yeah. You see, so what was your reaction to people as you started sharing the Lord with them? Some said yes, and or was it just good for you, or some just said... You know, you're a holy roller. Or you're crazy. Or well, you get you get a little, you get a little bit of everything <laughs> like that, Joe. But that's what people, there's some people that are hungry for for life, for for love, and God loves us, and He demonstrated that love by sending His Son to the cross, and we need to believe that love, that God so loved the world that He gave His Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, everlasting fellowship with Him. Yeah. And that we can know the creator of the universe, the one who made heaven and earth, and we can, that he can become our father. And there's people that are hungry for, for love, and God 
is there to supply that love yeah. and if we, if we come to him. And, and Satan's there to say, this is what love is. You know, buy yourself a beautiful woman. Right, right. right? Uh, you know, and, and make yourself a lot of money. Right. You know, and, and what he emphasizes on outward. Yeah. But inside, like uh, dead men's bones, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so basically, uh, the outward uh, situation, uh, yeah. maybe she puts on 50 pounds, and yeah. maybe you put on 75 pounds. <laughs> Where's that love right. that it was? You know, right. it was right. maybe like a lust or yeah. something. Yeah. But when the love of God shed abroad in your heart through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, yeah. then what happens is, is that you, you can understand Mm -hmm. that this life yeah. is something different from within yeah. than what you see. Right, and that's right. what the enemy wants you to have, yeah. what you see and what you focus on. And, and it's temporal. Yeah, right. And people trying to fill their life with stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, there was a play where a person died and he went to this place and he can have anything he wanted. He can have any movie he wanted, any genre he wanted, any, uh, move, you know, any, any music. And... He got so bored. He said, if this is heaven, I want to go to hell. And the angel said, well, where do you think you are? Wow. Because he was trying to fill his life with stuff. stuff. But stuff doesn't fulfill us. It, Joe, it's relationships. It's family. It's being having family that, that love you and you love them. And there's a, a reciprocation and a, and a caring for one another. And you find that in, 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 in Christ. Mm. He provides that for us. Yeah. He, he, and he's the only one. And he's the only he one. Because he says, I am the way. He's the way to heaven. I'm the truth. Amen. And I'm the life. Yeah. And, and so you get new life. Yeah. And, and so uh, the hour that we're living in, in this world, it's the world's upside down. What they say is uh, right is to wrong. What, what they say we say is uh, right, they say wrong. What they yeah. say is wrong. What they do and say is wrong is right. Yeah. But there are some people that are hungering and thirsting for the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And, and he will come to them if they acknowledge him mm -hmm. To, mm -hmm. to do that, and mm -hmm. as you did. Uh, and what it did, Ben, uh, is that, uh, as a closing now, uh, as a young boy, 16, Okay, um, your mind was saved from mental torment, mm. what you could have had without mm. Christ, mm. especially in mm -hmm. the hour that we're living in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ben, so much for coming on the show and uh, bringing hope to people mm -hmm. in a new way that you weren't what a lot of people are to come to Christ. You mm -hmm. just knew that you needed the love and God gave it to you. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you, well, you heard another story. If you've been listening to our, our programs, watching them, uh, Christ is the answer. It doesn't matter what you think, right? It doesn't matter what you think. There's no hope in what you think, but the hope is in Jesus Christ. Eternally, but right now here on earth, you can make it with a peace and a joy and a love, knowing God loves you. Thank you for watching our broadcast today and receive Christ into your life. He'll forgive you of your sins and you'll start a new journey as uh, Reverend Benjamin did. God bless you. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world. Oh!